Well, good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to our pre-registration information session. Um, so sorry, I'm still seeing folks in the waiting room. So let me make sure, yes, that's being activated. And so everyone should be joining us in this main classroom. So welcome to the Faculty of Humanities and Education and to our pre-registration session. I am Dr. Stanley Griffin, and Deputy Dean for Undergraduate Matters in the Humanities. But as of the 1st of August, in a few days time, my portfolio will include education. So I'm looking forward to working with all the students right across the faculty um, as of August 1st. Um, I want to do a bit of, um, I want to do a, roll call differently rather than calling out names and having just head speak. I would want you to use the reactions. Are you seeing the reactions um, tab down, panel down in the, 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 it's almost close to the chat box. Everyone seeing that? Wonderful. Thank you, Tanisha. Hopefully I pronounced that, Ms. Pinnock. Hopefully I pronounced it incorrectly. Yes. So when I call your department's name, choose one perhaps let's go with the applause the hand clap for starting with I have my list here history and archaeology the applause icon are we are there any history and archaeology folks here yes not many historians and archaeologists here all right the department of language linguistics and philosophy oh Brian T, that's you. So we're now seeing language, linguistics, and philosophy. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Institute for Caribbean Studies, use a thumbs up. ICS, folks from ICS. Orano, yes. Seeing you. Good. Tanika. Great. Folks from language, linguistics, and philosophy, you're using the heart emoji, heart, um, no, heart emoji. Language, linguistics, and philosophy. Renee, good to see you. Library and information studies, you're using the surprise emoji, the shock face. Any LIS, Chevian Lewis, good, good. Roseanne Gordon, great. All right. Next, we have literatures in English. You're using the smiley face. Adrian, seeing you there for a library school. So, literatures in English. Ha yes. Navina, hopefully I'm pronouncing Kyle, hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly. Thank you. Modern languages and literatures. Let's use a thumbs up. Modern languages and literatures. Good. Javon, good. Karimak, raise your hand if you're with Karimak. Well, loss, Karimak. I can't call all them names. Karimak, you're definitely here. All right. And did I miss anyone? The School of Education. The applause emoji. Therese. Thank you. Atesia. Yes, Chanel. Great. Happy to see all of you. And we do have folks joining us from our affiliated colleges, the United Theological College of the West Indies. Any possible theologians and ministers joining us today? You're using the hands up. All right. And we do have friends from St. Michael's Theological College. You're also using the hands up. Wonderful. 
So I'm seeing all of you, you're all definitely here and you're all definitely a part of the wonderful family called the Faculty of Humanities and Education. I wish to recognize the presence of some other colleagues in the room, including heads of departments. I'm seeing Dr. Livingston White. I am not seeing any other head. If, I'm, if you're a head and you're here, please feel free to shout your name out. I'm not seeing your names. Oh, Leila, I should have mentioned, if you're doing the geography program, you're a part of the Department of History and Archaeology. So those in the Bachelor of Arts in Geography, you belong to the History and Archaeology Department. I also wish to recognize um, undergraduate coordinators. I see Rayan Smith. Hold on, did I get that name correctly? Rayan, don't kill me. Rayan, I thought I saw you. Rayan, yes. yes. Rayan Smith is here. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I saw another name of another undergraduate coordinator, but the screen is moving. So if you're a coordinator, please feel welcome. I also see a senior lecturer in education, Dr. Sharon Br Bramwell Lelo, who has a special uh, responsibility for program. She leads our faculty, FACWAC, I could never call that committee's name correctly, but she's responsible for all the things you will be learning. And so we're happy to have you, Dr. Bramwell Lela, with us this afternoon. And Good hopefully afternoon. Have... I'm also uh, representing Dr. Rainford, who is- Oh, wonderful. Um, so yes. you're, represent, you're, you're, you're representing the director of the School of Education, Dr. Rainford. Happy to have you with us and welcome to everyone. This afternoon, we have a very tight program. And so the privilege is mine to start the ball rolling. We're going to be talking about what you can expect in terms of your registration process and generally what you will be learning generally and then student life. This, your faculty rep is joining us shortly and when she comes on, she will be introduced. The privilege is mine, however, to introduce you to the head of our faculty or faculty of humanities and education is headed by a dean. And that person is Professor Sylvia Cohenberg. She is a Creole linguist by calling, I would say, right? Her academic life is surrounded by that particular discipline, which many of you will engage in with in some of your courses. And so the privilege is mine to hand you over to Professor Cohenberg. Dean Cohenberg, your newbies. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Griffin Stanley, for that um, introduction. Uh, a great welcome to everybody who is uh, joining us today. And um, I see that the number of participants keeps increasing. Um, I think that's a real indication that um, Students are really eager to come and join this faculty and be oriented towards their life in this faculty. Uh, so I know that many of you have actually begun the process of figuring out um, what your program looks like, uh, what courses to take in your program. I see that people have begun registering in courses. And so we decided to uh, have this special session um, in order to orient students uh, towards uh, the registration process and to, you know, really help you understand um, how it is that you can begin registration in a way that is not going to cause you any difficulties uh, in the coming years. We want to make sure you will uh, get it right uh, the first time. So I'm going to um, share a presentation that hopefully will explain a number of things for you. So let me just bring it up. Okay, so I trust you are seeing this, the Faculty of Humanities and Education. Um, we have here the logo of the Uimona campus. Uh, you, we have here the OWL, which is our 
mascot and which you will be seeing a lot of over the coming years. It is how we uh, distinguish ourselves from other faculties. And uh, there's a photo here of a wonderful piece of art um, that sits in one of the faculty gardens. Um, and, you know, it's one of the ways in which uh, we uh, distinguish ourselves as as faculty that we have this artwork and others, other um, significant elements in the faculty. So we're here in a pre-registration session. And um, uh, again, I want to welcome you to this faculty and our slogan is that this is your place to shine. So we are excited that you're joining us and that you will be, um, graduating in a few years time as uh, our ambassadors, people who will understand what wonderful programs and courses we offer and how, uh, how much you can do with that um, in your future life. I'm going to introduce in a general way the program structure for the Bachelor of Arts. I'm going to speak a bit about course selection, uh, about the uh, undergraduate student handbook, um, I'm going to emphasize the importance of the pro process of academic advising and speak a little bit about the registration process and what things to pay attention to. So what does a program look like? So I'm introducing here the general structure for the Bachelor of Arts. And if we um, have time remaining, I'm sure we'll be able to look at a B.Ed. example as well, Bachelor of Education. So to begin, every program has courses at different levels. We distinguish three levels. Um, if you are coming in as a trained teacher and you're doing the B.Ed., you're actually skipping level one for the most part. Uh, outside of that, everybody, whether you're coming in as Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Education, uh, will be going through three program levels, level one, level two, level three. The programs, the courses you are taking add up to 90 credits. In some programs, a bit more than 90 credits. Uh, but for most programs, uh, the programs are worth 90 credits. And I'll talk about what that means in a minute. If you are coming in as a full-time student, then level one is pretty much year one for you, level two would be year two, and level three would be your final year. That is, if you pass all your courses, if you fail any courses, then you will have to make up for those failed courses. So in that case, you may end up, for instance, in your second year, taking some level one courses. If you are a part-time student, then you are going to be straddling different levels uh, of your program over the course of your uh, years here. So if you are a part-time student, obviously you're going to start at level one, but in your second year, you will still be taking some courses that are courses at level one, uh, while at the same time in second year, you will start to take courses that are at level two. So how do you find your courses? Well, our courses have course codes. The course codes identify our courses. And I'm giving the example here of history courses. And we see that um, a number of courses here begin with HIST, which is short for history. So the four letters identify the subject area. In this example, you're also seeing some courses that are identified as found, and that is short for foundation. And one thing you will find is that no matter which program you are in, every student must take a number of foundation courses. So everything else may be different, but every student must take a number of foundation courses. Following those first four letters, there are four numbers, and the first numeric digit gives you the course level. So we see, for instance, HIST 1201. The first digit, uh, the first number there is one, so that's a level one course. 
If you look in the next column, HIST 2006, that's a level two course because two is the first number there. And as a first year student, a student beginning your program, you are not registering in courses that begin with a two or a three. All your course registrations at this time are going to be in courses that um, begin with a one. Uh, so then the remaining numbers uh, tell the course from among others at the same level in the program. So his 1201, his 1704, his 1604 are three different level one courses. So what are credits? So as I said, your courses are over three levels and they must add up to at least 90 credits. What is a credit? You build up your degree by earning credits. Every time that you pass a course, every time that you are successful in a course, you earn credits. Every course is worth a designated number of credits, and that is really dependent on the number of hours that you spend in the classroom. In the, our system, most undergraduate courses are taught over one semester. So here is an example of a course uh, that is a level one course. You see that it is HIST 1604, one, that gives us level one. Um, and if we look at the dates at the end here, we see that it is taught from the 4th of September to the 24th of November. Uh, so that's a period of 13 weeks. This is semester one. And um, what we see is that when you register in this course, that you are going to be in a lecture, M11 lecture, that this lecture takes place on Mondays from one to three. So that is two hours. The course also has something called tutorials, which are small, small group discussions, and you would be selecting one tutorial either T01 or T02. T01 is Tuesday 12 to 1. T02 is Wednesday 10 to 11. In other words, the tutorial that you select adds one hour. So you have a total of three classroom hours and that is three credits. Of course, outside of the classroom hours, you're going to be spending at least another three hours, if not more, in reading, preparing assignments and so on. So the credit count is based on the number of hours that you spend in the classroom. Now, here is an example of a course for which you earn no credits in semester one because it is a year long course. So just going back here, you see that where it says cred, cred is short for credits, it said three. If you're successful in this course, you earn three credits at the end of the semester. Now, for this course, Found 1019, Critical Reading and Writing in the Disciplines, you earn zero credits in semester one because you must also register in this course in semester two. It's a so-called year-long course. So you will have classes in semester one. You will have classes in semester two. The work you do in semester one is added to the work you do in semester two. And if all of that together means that you are successful in the course, then you earn six credits at the end of semester two. In this particular case, for this semester, for the semester one of this course, you would be taking a lab and you see that you have a selection of labs here that you choose from and you would be taking a seminar and you can see that you have a selection of seminars to choose from. Is everyone following? I'm not sure. Um, Stanley, if there are any questions coming up that I should be addressing, please point them out to me. Most definitely. Great, thank you. Okay, so this one would be worth six credits because you have three hours in the classroom in semester one over 13 weeks, and then again, three hours in the classroom in semester two over 13 weeks. All right, so let's look again at the program structure of a Bachelor of Arts. Um, let me just go back to this example. All right. Here we see that at level one of this particular program, there are a couple of courses that are prescribed. There are here three history level one courses that every student in this program must take. 
And then it says at least one other history course. So that's four history courses, three that are prescribed, one that you select freely, as long as it's a level one history course. The other requirement at level one is that you take foundation courses, that you take a foreign language course, unless you already took foreign language at CSEC or CAPE. In that case, you can still do a foreign language, but it would be uh, your free choice to do so. And then you have some additional electives to take. So a student who is full-time would be taking 30 credits at level one. The 90 credits of your program is distributed over each level. So 30 credits level one, 30 credits level two, 30 credits level three. And 30 credits means that each semester as a full-time student, you would be registering in five courses. If you're a part-time student, you would be registering in three courses or not more than three courses. So how can you, what can you, your week look like as an example? Here is an example of a full, time students registration in five courses for semester one. This example is from last year. So what we see here is that this student's schedule included courses over Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, coincidentally, no, no classes on Thursday or Friday, that, that will vary with the classes that you select. This student had on Monday at 10 a.m. a foundation class, later in the day a philosophy class, and the last class of the day was a history class. On Tuesday, the student began their day with a history class, then went on to do a journalism class, another journalism, the same journalism class, but two different parts of it. Journalism 1004 M11, that's the Mona lecture, followed by journalism 1004 T01, that's a tutorial. Then back to philosophy, and here we see that this is the same philosophy course as the student was in on Monday because it has the same course code, Phil 1003. The same course code, but a different part of the class because what we see on Monday is M11, that's a Mona lecture. And what we see on Tuesday is T02, that's a tutorial. Then back to history. And again, this is the same history class as the one the student took on Monday, uh, because it has the same course code 1018, but it's another section, another part of the class. And finally, on Wednesday, the student continued their foundation class and continued their second history course. So this student was registered in a foundation course, one philosophy course, two history courses, and a journalism course. Um, all of this adds up to, since it's five courses, it will add up to 15 credits that the student can earn in the semester. And then in semester two, the student would earn another 15 credits and thus make up the 30 credits at level one if um, the student is successful in all their courses. So how do you know what your program structure is? Uh, well, you are going to need to consult the handbook for that. The undergraduate handbooks are available at uh, this website. Um, so it's on the Mona website, it's under HUMED, which is short for Humanities and Education, and under the link for faculty handbooks. Um, and uh, under that link, you have to select undergraduate handbooks, postgraduate handbooks are also available there, and then you select the most recent year. For, for you as new incoming students, the handbook that sets out the requirement for your program is the handbook of your year of entry. So that is the 2023-2024 handbook. That handbook will be ready before our orientation at the end of August. And please, if you haven't done so yet, make a note of that date the 28th of August is when we have our official orientation for all new students at 9 a.m. So make sure you come to the campus on the 28th of August at 9 a.m. for your official orientation. 
So for now, you're going to work with the handbook for the 22-23 academic year, but you're going to remember to come back to this page for the handbook that sets out your the, the requirements for, for your year of entry. All right, so when you're ready to register for a course, then one uh, thing to keep in mind is that most courses have what we call different sections. So in this particular example, ah, I was just corrected. Uh, to say that orientation on the 28th of August starts at 10 a.m. So you can sleep an hour late. All right, so the 28th of August at 10 a.m. All right, so when you're ready to register in a course, you want to remember that each course or most courses um, consist of different sections, all of which you must select and attend. So here is an example. I'm going back to that history course. Um, it has two types of sections. So the SEC is for section, two types of sections, M11, which is a lecture. And then there is a choice of two tutorials, T01, T02. So whatever sections are available, you must select one of those sections. Now for the lecture, you only have one choice. So you select that choice. So you put, uh, whoops. You select the choice, select the lecture right here, and then you look at your overall timetable and you choose your tutorial and don't just choose the first one. Um, really make sure that it's going to fit with other classes that you're taking. And then you select the tutorial of your choice and only then do you submit uh, your registration. So what sorts of sections are there? That will depend on the course. So an M is for a Mona lecture. If you are a student at Western Jamaica campus, then you will look for a W, which is for a Western Jamaica campus lecture. If you're a Mona student and you select a Western Jamaica campus lecture, your selection will be rejected. Okay, you will, you will be confronted with an error in your, when you try to submit that registration. A T is for a tutorial, and then it will be followed by a number um, for the choice of tutorial. A B is for a lab session, an S is for a seminar, and so on. So there is a number of different um, letters that are used to abbreviate the sections. And if your course, for instance, a foreign language course might have a lab and a seminar and tutorial, and then you must select one of each. If the T, the B, the S, or whatever it is, is there is followed by another letter instead of a number, you see here that it is T01, T02. If instead you see TA1, TA2, then you know that that tutorial is not at Mona. It is either at Western Jamaica campus or it is at another institution. And if you are a student on the Mona campus, you cannot select that um, section because it is not where you are. So as you embark on your registration process, five courses for full-time students, not more than three courses for part-time students, start by making sure that you understand your program requirements. So take a look at that most recent handbook. And seek academic advice from your department for some programs, that is extra important uh, because some programs have pretty complicated program requirements. And if you do not get the academic advice from your department, you may well end up making the wrong um, selections and that will hamper you as you try to complete your program. And of course, every course you're taking that is not a requirement for your program is a course that you're still paying for. So this is extra important for the BA Film Studies, for the BA Culture and Creative Industries, and for the BA Liberal Studies. 
So for every program, we always recommend that you seek the advice of your department, but that's even more true for those three Bachelor Pro of Arts programs and also for all of the Bachelor of Education programs. Make sure you seek the advice of the School of Education if you're a Bachelor of Education student, so you understand your program requirements and what courses um, to select. I also recommend that you visit the registration page and you work out your schedule for the week before you make your final selection. Let me just go back to the example of the student who registered last year. So the student um, was able to avoid clashes for all their courses. That is not always so very simple. So um, every student must register in a foundation course, an academic literacy course or foundation course. Um, every student must give priority to courses for their major. So you want to immediately make sure that you're not going to have a clash between your academic literacy course and courses in your major. So if you select a seminar for your foundation course, which happens to coincide with a tutorial for a course in your major, then you have to change your selection and make sure that you select a seminar in your foundation course that does not clash with the tutorial for the course in your major and so on. And once you have figured out um, what is the best schedule for those courses, you can add on the other courses. You can add on your foreign language course if you're taking one. You can add on your electives um, if you're taking any electives. And again, make sure to avoid clashes. Um, sometimes it's possible to take a course in second semester. That's not always the case, but some courses are offered in both semesters. And in that case, if you're unable to avoid a course clash in semester one, then choose that course in semester two instead. So for instance, for a foreign language course, um, you might find that it works better for you to take a foreign language course in semester two instead of semester one. So before you actually submit your registration, just work out your schedule for the week. So you look at, you know, the hours for the different sections, uh, plot it out on a piece of paper uh, before making your final selection. And once again, pay attention to the course set sections, select one of each lecture, tutorial, lab, workshop, whatever, select one of each section. So that is it for me. I want to end, end by again um, um, uh, uh, welcoming you to the Faculty of Humanities and Education, welcoming you to the University of the West Indies. We are celebrating uh, the 75th year of our existence. This university was founded in 1948. It's a university that has contributed much to the region and to the lives of its students. And we look forward to continuing that tradition with you. Thank you. Sandy? Yes, here I am. Back to you. Wonderful. Um, so we've had quite a bit. I'm not seeing myself here. What's happening? Give me a second. Uh, we're, I'm seeing you. We're okay. seeing you. Great. Um, so. Any questions that you want me to address? Um, thankfully, the questions have been um, taken by various coordinators and lecturers. So they've Great. basically been covered. And so, yes, over, over, for, over for you. I want to do several things right now. One is, where am I? Here am I. Okay. Right. I want to do several things. One is go through quickly the faculty handbook because I want to speak to those who are returning especially. Now, you, you would have noticed that the dean made reference to your elect the program structure. You taking required courses, 
and having a bit of um, opportunity for electives. There's a reason for the madness. I want to go through, so this is our faculty page. Go back. There we are. It takes you to our handbooks. As the Dean said, the latest handbook will come out in time for registration. And so you'll have the opportunity to select courses that will form part of your program as electives. However, I want us to focus especially on our minors. Let me bring it up quickly. So we have, so you, your, your major is the focus of your degree, what you've signed up for, but we also have, and we're emphasizing the privilege to declare minors. This is an opportunity for you to select another program of five or six courses, 15 to 18 credits that you could add to your major, all right? Um, so we're calling it minors with major possibilities. You literally could craft a degree that is shaped based on your own interests. And so here's the list, right? Chinese, create, Chinese Mandarin, creative writing, it goes all the way down to information studies, which is, which is my department, cultural studies, there's Japanese, there's linguistics, there's journalism, there's music and performing arts, uh, performance studies, sorry, Rastafari studies. So you have the privilege of creating, um, uh, using the minors to build out your knowledge. Why I am suggesting that you be very careful is that some of these minors may require a level one course. And so what you could do is use that level one elective to start the process, even though you declare your minor at the beginning of your second year, hopefully I'm correct with that, right? So this is really a talk for the returning students. The privilege is also yours to do two minors as part of your major. There's a process for applying for that, but think of that and also be very clear that if and when you declare a minor, you need to complete the requirements of that minor in order to graduate, all right? So we have had instances where persons have met the, the requirements for their major, but because they declared a minor and they have made a mistake in perhaps choosing a course that is not within the minor, they have, I either had to um, drop the minor declaration or do another semester to do to complete that minor. So be very careful if and when you choose a minor to fulfill the requirements thereof. And there was one more thing I need to do. Now, as a faculty, we want to be in touch with you. And so we have we we have you devised several opportunities let me get it bring it up to screen sorry multitasking here via our social media plat social media platforms to keep in touch with you as well as you know keeping in touch with your department so we have the scan click and connect using this qr code you will have access to our various websites, including the handbooks and, and so forth and so forth. We have a presence on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. The recording will be on our faculty YouTube and as well we have our website. First, folks, first and foremost, your department office is your first port of call your undergraduate coordinators and your heads of departments are, you know, they're not scary people. They are willing and, you know, ready to assist you. So if you have any difficulties or have any questions, feel free to start your queries there at your department office with your department, with your program coordinator, your undergraduate, undergraduate studies coordinator, or in some departments, they may have a program coordinator, which is a person responsible for that particular program that's being offered, right? Or the head of or head of the department, or in some instances, the schools, the directors of the school. All right. And then there is one more thing. Coming up, we want you to 
scan and chill, right? So you'll be seeing these um, flyers with QR codes, basically responding to some regular questions that you you chances are expected to have, right? And so if you have a, a registration query, chances are you could scan the QR code, scan and chill, it will take you where you need to be, all right? So we're using social media to help you orient yourself as we prepare for orientation. Now, hopefully I've covered, and there's going to be several, and as I said, stay very much in, in touch with your department social media, your departmental office, and our faculty social media as we prepare for orientation in August, which I will share some dates coming up. We want to be very clear though. We want to be very clear. Your studies is one major aspect of your time with us, your classroom, but in true humanities and education style, it's not just about your studies. And so we're so grateful to have your faculty rep, um, Zanti Thomas. She has some plans for you. And so she's going to share them with you now and tell you what to expect coming up to orientation, including our orientation village, or only day and all sorts of exciting things. So Zante, are you here? Yes, Dr. Griffin, I am here. Wonderful, um, I'd like to share your screen, right? Okay, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Yes, because I need to do that. So there you are. Okay. And thanks to the various members of the faculty office, I see Ms. Dennis Copeland and the various lecturers and undergraduate coordinators for responding to questions as we proceed. We are doing this for one hour sharp, so I'm grateful for the assistance in responding to your queries. Zante, over to you. Okay. All right. Everybody seeing my screen? Yes, we are seeing lots of it. Okay. Okay, so hi everybody. Good afternoon. I am Zante Thomas. I am the Faculty of Humanities and Education Guild representative for this academic year. All right, so you guys would have been seeing the word OLET a lot. Well, OLETs, we refer to you guys as OLETs because you are the new and transfer students, the first year, and then second year and beyond, we call you guys OLETs. As I said before, I am your faculty representative. I am currently pursuing a bachelor's degree in integrated marketing communication from Carmack, and I I have, oh, sorry, I am heading into my second year. Last year, I was quite involved in the faculty. I was a first year student that like you guys, and I was the director of marketing and communications in the Humid External Affairs Committee, as well as my major rep, a part of the Carmack Committee. Okay, so you guys would know by now that the UIMONA Guild is the official advocacy and representational student body at un the University of the West Indies. And I was elected to serve you guys in March. My term officially began on June 1. And as a result, I had to appoint a committee. The various committee portfolios are as follows, the cultural and entertainment, Affairs Committee, the Academic Affairs Committee, which is new this year, Student Welfare, External Affairs, Games Committee, Public Relations, Publications, and lastly, the Department Portfolios. All right, so these are the lovely members of the board. We have Paris Wright, she's here with me, Paris. You want to say hi? Hi guys. So she is my first deputy representative. 
Ariana Johnson is my second deputy. You have Shini Williamson, my secretary. Kelia is our treasurer. We have Talia, she is the CEAC. Vashti, the External Affairs Committee chairperson. Xavier is our student welfare chairperson. Courtney deals with all things academic affairs. Marceline is our publications committee chairperson. Shamari is our PRO and Imani is our games committee chairperson. And then your lovely department representatives. I believe some are here. I saw Adrian typing in the chat. Leopold is the car correct? Adrian is our language. Hello. And yeah, hi Leopold. Adrian is our LLP representative. Kevin is our library and information studies rep. Shanake is our literature in English rep. She's currently on leave. So my second deputy representative, Paris, will be acting as your LIE rep for now. Jessica represents the Modern Languages and Literatures Committee. Shevin is our history and archaeology rep. Shanil is our School of Education rep. And last but not least, we have Tremaine Smith, our Institute of Caribbean Studies representative. <clears throat> Sorry. OK, communication. All right, so Paris will be sending a link in the group chat. I'm kindly asking that you guys fill it out. Why we want to diversify the means of communication with you guys. Um, we, rea we realize that sending our event flyers in the group chats, you guys might not see them because when the school works hit hit us, we tend to, you know, mute the group chats and not check it. So we want to include emailing as a part of our communication means, the personal emails, because also persons don't check their UE emails, unfortunately. So Paris will be sending the link and I'm kindly asking that you guys fill it out. Communication with representatives. I am available via WhatsApp as well as email. Um, when the school season hits, sometimes the messages might get overwhelming and I might not see your message. So I'm kindly asking that you guys email me as well. Guildhumedrep at gmail.com. WhatsApp chats. We currently have our, our Humid Outlets WhatsApp group up. If you guys are not in the WhatsApp chat, Paris will also be sending the link in the group chat. Objectives for this year. So my committee and I have a few main objectives that we want to come, we want to achieve this year. Effective communication. So diversifying the means that we use to reach out to you guys, um, as well as using ensuring a wide reach by consistently using high engagement social media platforms like TikTok and Instagram. Um, as well as utilizing the course scripts more as it relates to communication with you guys. We really, really, really want to cultivate more faculty pride this year, as well as showcasing our talents, because we know that this faculty is the best at Yurimona, as well as the faculty that has the most creatives. So we really want to give you guys that platform. Additionally, student welfare, um, we come to school for academic purposes, but we also want to cater to other aspects. So stress management, mental health, we, we will be implementing initiatives geared towards that. And last but not least, academic welfare. All right, I am here to encourage you guys to get involved. You might hear that a lot since orientation, but guys, it's, I'm going to use myself as an example. Last year, I was a first year student. And before I even attended my first class at UA, I was a part of two subcommittees. I did not use the fact that, oh, I'm in first year, I have to go wait until second year to get involved, no. And see, I am now here representing you guys. So joining a committee from first year will give you the opportunity to hone your, hone your skill as well as, you know, network with other students and gain the confidence. Our subcommittees, are applications are currently open. Guys, if you guys are graphic designers, videographers, photographers, 
video editors, animators. We want to see you guys applying. Please, 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 please. As well as we want persons for our event decor slash arts and craft team. So whenever we have our events, instead of, you know, hiring expensive decorators, we use our students because we know you guys are just or even more talented. So if you guys are any of these, please send me an email at guildhumidrep at gmail.com. We have over 90 clubs and societies at the University of the West Indies. Some of these clubs are um, attached to the Faculty of Humanities and Education. So we have the Carmack Student Society, History and Archaeology Society, and various language clubs like, I believe, Chinese or Mandarin, Japanese, Spanish, French. Last but not least, volunteerism. We have a specific portfolio that is geared towards that, which is the External Affairs Committee. So whenever you guys see opportunities, please, I'm begging you guys to volunteer. We need you guys. All right, as I mentioned before, we have approximately 16 subcommittees right now, and the sign up link is in the link tree in the bio of our Instagram page. Paris would have sent that link in the chat. So we have our Treasury Committee, Cultural CAC, um, Academic Affairs, Student Welfare, External Affairs, Games Committee, Public Relations, and publications. Again, if you guys are content creators, because our TikTok is fairly new, so we want you guys to help out with that as well. Here are the various um, department flyers. We will also be reintroducing Hello Humid, which is a show by the students for the students. That show will be under the public relations portfolio, and it will cover various aspects from event recaps to street interviews. The applications to join this team will be open soon, so guys, look out. Again, social media, Instagram. Please follow us on Instagram as well as TikTok. Currently, we don't have a lot of followers, so I'm hoping that after we leave today, I see how many persons are in the meeting. At least 100 persons following our TikTok now and our Instagram. We're also on Threads and Twitter as well. Student life, activities and events. All right, so guys, we plan and execute these activities. Sorry for the typo. Um, and events for you. So we're imploring that you participate in these initiatives and activities and attend these so that it's successful. Because if you plan it and then nobody shows up, it flops and we don't want that to happen. All right, something exciting is brewing. We, this year, we want to launch our merch. So we'll have a merch design competition. We know we have a lot of creatives and graphic designers. So this will be your chance to, you know, show that. We'll also have TikTok challenges as well as talent competitions. You guys will hear more about that in the semester. All right. So this year, this is a big one. Um, our last... Um, our last pageant, I believe, was in 2021, and that was online. So this will be our first in-person pageant. It's a big one. We want to open applications during Humanities Week, which is in November. So if you're planning to enter that, guys, just condition your mind and start, you know, doing some training. Okay, Student Welfare Fundraisers. All right, we want to do fundraisers so that we're able to give back to you guys as well as help fund the events that we're putting on for you. Um, so the memorabilia and merch sale is a part of the fundraising. All right, Humanities Week, the biggest thing happening in semester one. Humanities Week is from November 12 to 18, and the aim of Humanities Week is to cultivate faculty pride. Again, these cannot be successful without your participation. So I'm begging you guys, I'm literally begging, please participate. The proposed events include a gospel fest, wear your merch day, family feud games day, 
what can I do with my humanities degree, which is a flagship event, it usually happens annually, as well as this is a big one, a cocktail. Again, you guys will hear more about that in the semester. All right, so we want to execute, we'll be executing a club expo on Thursday, September 14 during club time in order to showcase to you guys all the clubs and societies that we have. And this will be an opportunity for you guys to meet the club members and the club executive, as well as to give them your contact information and to sign up. All right, so this one is special. Um, the celebration of Deaf Awareness Month, which is in September. Um, I'm a lover of sign language and deaf culture, as you guys may have seen in my intro in the UE Freshers group. And so in association with Sign Clubs of Jamaica, which is also a foundation, a, an association that I founded, we will be acknowledging Deaf Awareness Month through a forum where we'll have both deaf and hearing persons integrate and interact. Students who are, who are or will be taking a carbon sandwich course at the department will also find this useful. We hope to partner with the Department of Language, Linguistics and Philosophy, Pad Deaf Dance Company, Jamaica Association for the Deaf, Tony Turb, everybody knows Antoinette, she's on TV every day, um, ready to sign JSL, Deaf Optimist Club, and other deaf associations. Kent City. All right, so the general orientation is on August 24 and August 25, usually halls and faculties, as well as external um, entities have their booth set up. Guys, if I don't see you guys coming to our booth, I will literally cry. We're doing this for you guys, so please stop by and interact. And Dr. Griffin would have mentioned um, August 28th and also our dean, um, which is faculty orientation, and we want you guys to stop by. Other areas of focus. We are your voice. So we want to have a platform where you guys are able to come and talk and, and air your concerns and suggestions. So we want to have an in-person town hall once per semester. And anytime we send out surveys and forums, we're asking you not to ignore them. It's for you. Please to find the time and fill it out. Many other initiatives and events are in store, so stay tuned. Again, guys, I should be seeing the following going up right, right now. Ensure you are keeping up with us on social media and sharing and liking our content. We post and tag us as well. Guys, may I beg you, please. All right, thank you for listening. For our soul, one humanities. That is. It. Thank you very much, Zante. So, folks, you have no reason not to be fully active and engaged by the time orientation hits. So, let me just remind you of those details. The university campus orientation will take place on Thursday, the 24th, and Friday, the 25th of August, 2023. But all roads lead to Neville Hall 1. And, and, and yeah, Neville Hall, Room 1. Neville Hall Lecture Theatre, sorry. Um, on N1. 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 Yes, that's yeah. simple as that. <laughs> remember it. On Monday, the 28th of August, 2023, chances are at 10 a.m. And we will have our faculty orientation at that point. We will meet you, our dean, our heads, or, or you know, all the persons you definitely need to interact with, persons from the bursary, persons from the library, persons from health, um, the health center and student services and development. So you need to be there. Orientation on Monday the 25th and academic advising will happen immediately thereafter, academic advising and registration in your individual departments. Between now and then, please stay in touch via our faculty um, pages, social media, and so forth. And also keep in touch with your departments. 
so that you could be properly oriented and prepared for school in September. We're looking forward to seeing all 172 of you. And I'm very pleased that you were able to share this time with us. Those of you who missed it, or please tell your friends and your relatives who did not show up this afternoon that the video recording will be placed on our YouTube channel so that persons could benefit from more time this afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Dean, any final thoughts from you? You're muted. Still, yes, yeah. and thank you for pointing that out to me. I will just want to repeat the 28th of August, 10 a.m. Um, you see that picture uh, behind Dr. Griffin, that is our faculty courtyard. We expect to see you there and welcome you in our main lecture theater, N1, also known as Neville Hall Lecture Theater. Um, and then you will have an opportunity to uh, meet your heads of department, to meet some of the um, lecturers who will be teaching you in the coming year and obtain more information, including information about courses outside of your own department. Thank you, Dean. Okay. Thank, thank you. That's it. All right. So I'm going to leave the room open for a few minutes because there are all sorts of wonderful details being placed in the chat. So contact contact emails and and social media pages for departments and so forth. So if you haven't taken the opportunity to look through the chat, I'm leaving the room open for a few minutes to allow that. But that's it. Chances are this may be the only time you have a one hour class or one hour gathering of this sort. So do enjoy the rest of the afternoon and see you all in August. All right. Bye. Yes. Bye bye. They probably are reaching my report. They probably are reaching my report. They probably are reaching my report. They probably are reaching my report.
All right, folks, I'm going to close the room.